Welcome to Gay Fairfax, now a weekly entertainment magazine sharing news, views, and pride. I'm Barry Forbes. And I'm Michelle Michaels. Each week we'll feature events and personalities of interest to gay men and women in Northern Virginia. On this show, we'll talk to Dale Richards, the trivia master, about her new book, Lesbian Lists. And we'll discuss the new lesbian agenda by the national lobbying organization called the Human Rights Campaign Fund. And we'll wrap up the show with a chat with singer-songwriter Cheryl Jacobs, who mesmerized the crowds at the 1990 D.C. Gay Pride celebration. But first, here's Peg McCraw with our gay trivia question. What president of the United States was rumored to have had a homosexual affair with a member of Congress? Thank you, Peg. The Gay Book of Lists is an amusing and informative collection of gay trivia, but it focuses primarily on men. So author Dale Richards decided to write her own book of trivia and called it Lesbian Lists, a look at lesbian culture, history, and personalities. I had a chance to talk to the author about her clever, enlightening, and often outrageous collection of lists. I've got a great book here. It's called Lesbian Lists. I'm slimming through it. In fact, I've read most of it. Ten questions most commonly asked of lesbians and the answers you'll never hear. Here's a good sample of it. How about this one? Which one of you is the man? We're lesbian, not confused. Look it up. <laughs> this is great stuff. And Le Del Richards wrote this book, Lesbian List, and she's with us today. And it's a wonderful compilation of culture and arts and history and words, and it's wonderful. Thank and, you. And, and how is it that you wrote this book? Um, Allison Publications asked me to do a book of lists, to be the counterpart of the gay book of mm -hmm. lists, which mostly is gay male. Um, and I just thought about how would I want to do it, and um, was able to include all of the trivia that I've been collecting for practically all of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and it, it actually it came out to be much more historic than I mm -hmm. think anybody expected, including me, when I started it. Where was your source of information? I mean, how do you go about researching something like this? Um, since Stonewall, since we've had gay and lesbian studies programs, there's been about, oh, at least 100 books written that you can work out of. For instance, there's, um, we can always call them Bulgarians, Kyra Curtin's book, um, that has um, lesbians and gay men in the theater. And it talks about lesbian and gay actresses and lesbian and gay plays and playwrights. And so almost all of the theatrical lists are from that one particular book. You know, and, and I just took the books that I had and, and the books that Allison had and everybody else had and, and worked from them until I had what I wanted. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that I could think of anyway. You know. That brings up a good point as to how do you define lesbian in this book? I mean, how do you classify, get classified to be in this book? And you have an interesting approach to this. What I did, I think that you can't really take the modern definition of lesbian and extend it back into the past because I think the past was too different. We have, if we extend it to its broadest meaning, and that is any woman who tried to escape heterosexual domination and any woman who had affection and love and political, um, a political stance towards women then if you go back in time, you can, um, you know, you can even take a lot of the saints, like St. Joan of Arc or St. Margaret or St. Uncumber. She did not want to be un encumbered by men who, um, you know, did not marry and for all intents and purposes were spinsters. But, you know, they are really not a part of the heterosexual tradition. And so I included them in our tradition because I felt they were as gay as they could be for the time period given the fact that it was very religious. Right, good point. And, you know, they're not going to be sexual the way we perhaps probably would be today, not perhaps. Assumably. <laughs> <laughs> so Poor women, huh? Yeah. Well, that kind of uh, implies that feminist equals lesbian, and we're going to make feminists mad about that, the straight feminists. But. Well, you know, to a certain extent it does, though, because if you look in the Continuum Dictionary of Women's Biography, what you find is that a lot of the women who are spinsters are actually gay. A lot of the women we look back on, like Jane Addams, for instance, um, everybody considers her a spinster. No one considers her gay. And yet she had this huge network of friends that lived at Hull House. They had their steadies. They had their crushes. I mean, they had all of these things that are obviously a gay and lesbian reality. And yet the heterosexual would look at that and say, oh, no, 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 of course not. But we would look at that and say, hey, wait a minute. Of course, this is gay. This is as gay as it gets. Mm -hmm at least for the time period. Right. 
Here's another fascinating list. Turn of the century, ways to tell if a girl would become gay or if a woman was a lesbian from the medical journals of the day. Now, yes. 1890s, <laughs> smoke cigarettes in public, has a capacity for athletics and incapacity for needlework and other domestic occupations. And Freud really helped us out on this one. Has intellectual attributes usually associated with men and acuteness of comprehension and lucid objectivity. Incredible. 1990, um, a woman who goes to bars or has a firmness to her walk, a long step, and a rather heavy timbre to her voice. Yes. <laughs> sure sign. Um, I must ask you a question. What is your personal feeling about the word lesbian? And has that changed as a result of writing this book? I think it's a really good word. It has a, a historic origin that takes us back to an era when lesbians, um, even though they didn't call them lesbians in those days, um, were they were accepted. They and, um, you know, fascinating. We do have this incredible history that's been lost, mm -hmm. and completely lost. And so this suppressed. book, <laughs> right, it's suppressed, absolutely, but mm -hmm. this book helps bring the history out because it really is a great way to, to get a sense of how things have changed. It's a fun way. Mm -hmm. there's, there's not a lot of depth to it. I mean, it really just skims the surface. But it does show you that during different periods, during different eras, um, we do have these foremothers who founded convents or who, you know, passed as men when they wanted to work as soldiers and sailors in the Revolutionary War or the Civil War, any number of wars, um, who were romantic friends in the 19th century. Um, we have this incredible history that most women don't know about. Yeah. So tell me, Del, what do you hope readers will get out of reading this book? I hope they'll get a sense of their history. I hope they'll be really proud and that it will lead to other, lots of other research and, and lots of other interest in our history. Because I do think it's, we really have this glory. I mean, a lot of the women um, were the superstars of their era, the lesbians. And I think it's important for us to know that so that we can be proud of our heritage. Mm -hmm. This goes up to 1970. Yes. And are you working on another book that brings us up to the present? I will eventually do a second volume of Contemporary Women, but I'd like to hold off on that. What I'm working on right now is a biography of 50 lesbian superstars. Oh, how interesting. That Short be. biographies, uh -huh. yeah. To give you, because people said, oh, I'd like to know more about so-and-so, because there's only a paragraph per person. I mean, it's nothing. Um, and so give at least a more of a sense of them, mm -hmm. you know. That would be a great book. When do you expect that to come out? Uh, probably a year or so. Mm -hmm. Your book yeah. certainly enlightened me about the role women had in history and uh, how s sexuality has changed and the mm -hmm. roles of women has changed and the attitudes that women have changed and how that's related to lesbianism and feminism and I really recommend the book and I really enjoyed it and I thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It's been great. Thank you. For a long time, the national lobbying organization, called the Human Rights Campaign Fund, was dominated by men. But Kathleen Stoll has changed that. Kathleen is the director of the new project called the Lesbian Agenda, which assesses and addresses the needs and concerns of gay women around the country. I recently had a chance to speak with Kathleen about the HRCF's commitment to setting the lesbian agenda. Kathleen Stoll from the Human Rights Campaign Fund, thank you for joining us on Gay Fairfax today. Now, I know you have a long title. Could you tell me what your title is at the Human Rights Campaign Fund? Well, the official and full title is the Lesbian Issues and Outreach Director. And all fits on one little business card, right? Well, it's a tight squeeze. <laughs> Actually, it's the Lesbian Issues and Outreach Director who implements the Lesbian Action Agenda. Ah. Okay. Well, tell me a little bit about the organization, the Human Rights Campaign Fund. What's the purpose of the Campaign Fund? The Human Rights Campaign Fund is the nation's largest um, organization working to advance the rights of gays and lesbians in Capitol Hill. We're the largest national political advocacy organization mm -hmm. focusing on federal legislation. Um, we do that in three basic ways. Mm -hmm. We have a political action committee, often referred to as a PAC, which endorses candidates for Congress and makes contributions um, to those candidates. 
Uh, we expect to contribute about $600,000 mm. in this election cycle. We also have a field network um, where we mobilize constituent pressure uh, to apply to people in Congress, Congress people, not congressmen, although most of us aren't <laughs> so lucky as to have a congresswoman. Um, and the third part of our operation is our professional lobbying staff. Because of the, the wide nature of our gay and lesbian community, how can you determine what real issues people are interested in? Well, no one can give a final answer to what the lesbian agenda mm -hmm. is. Um, but what I've tried to do is survey lesbians. I had a survey instrument that went out to 4,000 lesbians, mm -hmm. um, asking them what they would prioritize as their top three issues. And I got those back. And of course, lesbians are wonderful. They write novels. <laughs> <laughs> they, I can't write these, but let me ta tell you what I think uh -huh. here. And, and I'd read through all these. And I also surveyed lesbian literature and women's literature. And then through public speaking and opportunities to go out in the field and, and mm -hmm. talk to women and, and lesbians who are involved in the movement and the women's movement as well. And I've identified issues that are, seem to be the highest priority for the lesbian community. Uh, I've identified domestic partnership issues as a top priority for us. And mm -hmm. of course, some of these issues are important to gay men as well, but they're special for lesbians perhaps because we're often uh, mothers, we have children, uh, and also the, the issue of health insurance comes through there. There's special lesbian health issues that mm. uh, have been identified as a priority. Breast and gynecological cancers, which often affect, uh, because of some of the, the factors for those diseases are, are more prevalent in the lesbian population. Those are important. And the abortion issue, the, a woman's mm reproductive freedom to choose an abortion if that is what she needs to do at a point in her life is actually one of the top three priority issues mm -hmm. for lesbians. So what do you do in a particular issue area? Let's take for example domestic partnerships. Uh, what are the particular concerns and how is the Human Rights Campaign Fund working to uh, change things in that area? Okay. Well once you identify the issues then you have to again put that back into the context of our organization which focuses on federal legislation. Mm -hmm. Some issues translate more easily into federal legislation than others. In the area of domestic partnership, we've created a national family registry where lesbians and gay men mm -hmm. can uh, register in a centralized place their family. It can be a partnership, it can be a, a non-traditionally structured family, and we use that as a tool to influence members of Congress and to influence the general mainstream media that the definition of family is not the narrow one which mm -hmm. the right wing and, and the uh, Lou Sheldons and the Dannemeyers of the world present, but really a, a broader definition that's based on love and commitment and mm -hmm. respect and support and, and those things that we exhibit in our relationships. We've created that. Um, and one of the parts of that that I really like is our photo album. We have a, a gay and lesbian family photo oh, album that we take up on the hill. And well, why is it needed to have a separate Division and Human Rights Campaign Fund. Isn't that ghettoizing gay women's issues or is it encouraging a wider awareness and acceptance of the issues within the broader community? There's a couple answers to that. First of all, lesbians are women, obviously, and we have a choice to involve ourselves in a broader women's movement mm -hmm. and join an organization like NOW, which I would encourage, or we can, we can go with the gay and lesbian movement. And like the guys, we like to work with other women. I mean, that's part of our identity. Also, um, I think there's some special issues of concern, like breast and cervical cancer issues, which um, are important and perhaps have not seen a lot of resources devoted to them recently because the movement has had mm -hmm. to respond. And it's important that we did this, respond to the AIDS crisis. Mm -hmm. And lesbians are affected by AIDS, but there is a point where we also want attention to some mm -hmm. of the health issues which strike us personally. Mm -hmm. So there's that need for balance. Um, and there's also just a sense of identifying with a special interest, uh, a special entity that's trying to figure out what you want and make sure it's incorporated into a broader mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. So there are men involved with the Lesbian Agenda Project? Or? Oh, definitely. I mean, our, our lobbyists, uh, we have a team of lobbyists. Some of those are men. And of mm -hmm. course, they work on the lesbian agenda items on mm -hmm. Capitol Hill. They lobby for that. 
Uh, it, when you join the Human Rights Campaign Fund... I was just going to ask you how I can join. <laughs> okay. You can join. It's 35 bucks uh, to join. And if you're a lesbian, you'll get mailings from me. Automatically? Automatically. If It's not a separate entity, mm -hmm. but part of the overall fund. If men are interested in receiving my materials, they're more than welcome to. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like to see men interested in, in knowing what their mm -hmm. sisters are concerned uh, about in the movement. We have a speak out program where you sign up to send telegrams to members of Congress. We do uh, lobbying. We'll help mm -hmm. people go up and talk to their member of Congress. We also direct people to campaigns. Okay. Uh, and that, that, of course, would bring to mind the Jim Moran's campaign for the 8th District here in mm -hmm. Virginia, which we're involved in. So there's a number of ways you can become involved. The key to all of those mm -hmm. levels of involvement is to call our office or come sure. by. Well, that sounds terrific. Uh, Kathleen Stoll from the Human Rights Campaign Fund, thank you very much for joining us today Thanks. on Gay Fairfax. Thanks, Barry. If you enjoyed watching Gay Fairfax, how about joining our production team? You could write, research, produce segments, or join our production crew. Write to us at Gay Fairfax in care of the Fairfax Lesbian and Gay Citizens Association at Post Office Box 2322, Springfield, Virginia, 22152. Or call us at area code 703-451-9528. In our final segment, you'll find out why Cheryl Jacobs is such a favorite in the Washington area. Gay Fairfax caught up with her performance at the Washington, D.C. 1990 Gay Pride celebration. And our reporter, Rob Wilson, caught her between acts to share a few notes. What was it like to do Gay Pride? I know you've done a number of them. Um, actually, this was my fifth Gay Pride Day, and um, my first Gay Pride Day was back when they, they had it in the block party and they would section off parts of DuPont Circle, which was a great feeling. Um, the audience was a little bit dispersed at that time, but it was still wonderful. Um, I always enjoy Gay Pride Day. It's, it's high energy. It's, there's something special about singing outside. You know, you feel the, the wind and the trees, and it just, the audience gives you a lot of energy. Being outside will give you a lot of energy, too. get all the inspiration for your music. I know you write a lot of your own stuff. Um, a lot of times I'll just be in a mood and a song will hit me and I'll say, gee, that's, that's a good song for my voice or gosh, I feel that way.
stage jitters. <laughs> right before we came in here today, you were just a little nervous, but it's really in, in a big crowd, you really get I the always, butterflies. Oh, I, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I get worse butterflies for a smaller group. Mm -hmm. Uh, because the smaller group is more intimate um, and the energy that they give you can be more intense and more distracting, you know, when you're right up in someone's face and that person is emoting a lot. You know, it can be very distracting. Yeah, I, I always get an upset stomach before I go on, but then I hit the stage and magically it just happens. has become somewhat the gay international anthem. Now, I would really like it if I could get a little participation from you, the people. This is a real easy part you have to play. At the end of each verse, it's a very simple line. I am what I am. think uh, that we, we go out, we pay our ticket, we sit in the audience, and we think, oh, we're passive. Uh, but the audience is very important to how the finished product comes out. Um, the attitude, uh, the energy that they give to you. Um, what I do is I, I receive what they're giving me, and I kind of take it in and manifest it, kind of channel it, you might say. Mm -hmm. And then I give it back to them. And uh, on Gay Pride Day, they they were very good. They they gave me a lot of energy. couldn't hear what what people were saying you know I could see these <laughs> but, uh, the only thing I heard all day long was uh, in the middle of I am what I am I said um, I am a lesbian I heard this scream from these women go off and it was like oh you still my heart uh, and that was great that's a great feeling I love gay club day do them again oh yeah absolutely oh yeah anytime
Well, how'd you do with this week's trivia question? Here's Peg with the answer. James Buchanan, our 15th president and the only bachelor president, allegedly had more than an executive interest in William Rufus Defane King, the U.S. Senator from Alabama. The recent discovery of letters between the two men lends credibility to these allegations. Well, that about wraps up this edition of Gay Fairfax. Now, don't forget that you can now tune into Gay Fairfax every single week. Tune in next time when we present an encore of the Lesbian and Gay Chorus of Washington. Plus, we'll talk to the head of a national gay veterans group and the executive director of the Northern Virginia AIDS Ministry. Remember, that's all next week on Gay Fairfax. We'll close the show with a reprise of singer-songwriter Cheryl Jacobs. For Gay Fairfax, I'm Barry Forbes. And I'm Michelle Michaels. Thank you for joining us. And remember to keep the pride alive.